Hello students, so today we are going to learn the fifth part of the chapter 4, Molecular Basis of Inheritance. In this particular part of the chapter, we are going to learn regulation of gene expression, operon concept, lack operon, genomics, human genome project and DNA fingerprinting. Now in this particular part of the animation, you can see how genomics or human genome project is going to be a part of our future aspect uh, where we learn about the DNA, the components present in DNA, how, how the DNA fingerprinting is going to be useful. Now, regulation of gene expression. It is a multi-step process by which a gene is regulated and its product is synthesized. Thus, gene expression result in formation of a polypeptide. Now, this as in the earlier two videos where we learned about protein synthesis, transcription, translation. So, it is a continuation of what you have learned earlier. So, here we can see the formation of a polypeptide. That is the gene expression which results in the formation of polypeptide or the product is produced or synthesized. Further, gene expression process is regulated at different level. In eukaryotes, the regulation can be at different levels like transcriptional level, the first part where formation of primary transcript takes place. Second, processing level that is regulation of splicing. Third, transport of mRNA from nucleus to the cytoplasm that is where the translation occurs. So, fourth part is the translational level. So, the mRNA is ready for translation which you can see in this particular animation image how the splicing takes place. You can see here intron which you have learned intron exon, exon earlier. So, intron is spliced or removed and exon is joint which you have seen in the earlier video. So, how the uh, mRNA translation occurs. Further, genes of a cell are expressed to perform different functions. For example, an enzyme beta galactosidase is synthesized by E. coli. As we know, uh, the genes of a cell are expressed and there are different functions to perform as well as individually. So, it is used for hydrolysis of lactose into galactose and glucose. So, as we know that lactose is used for hydrolysis of glucose and galactose. So, here we can see the equation lactose forming galactose and glucose in presence of enzyme beta galactosidase and utilizing water molecule. Further, if E. coli bacteria do not have lactose in the surrounding medium as a source of energy, then enzyme beta galactosidase is not synthesized. So, it is a metabolic or physiological or environmental conditions that regulate expression of the gene. So, as we see in this particular point, the E. coli bacteria do not have lactose in the surrounding medium as a source of energy. In that case, then enzyme beta galactosidase will not be synthesized. And if that is not synthesized, then further the breaking up or hydrolysis of lactose into galactose and glucose will also not take place. And thereby, the metabolic, physiological, environmental conditions that regulate expression of gene may all as well change. Further, the development and differentiation of embryo into an adult organism is also a result of coordinated regulation of or expression of several set of genes. So, not only the formation, the development or differentiation of embryo also uh, the further adult organism formation is also depending on the genes as there are several set of genes each of them have their own functions to perform or coordinate regulate the expression. Further certain bacteria like E. coli adapt to chemical environment by synthesizing certain enzymes depending upon the substrate present such adaptive enzyme 
is called inducible enzyme from the name inducible to induce so here the e coli can use the chemical environment for synthesizing the enzyme or depending on what type of substrate is present in the surrounding a set of genes will be switched on when there is necessity to metabolize a new substrate this phenomenon is called induction and small molecule responsible for this is known as inducer so it is positive control so here we can use the term positive control when uh, a set of genes which is switched on so when it's switched on it can metabolize a new substrate and the phenomenon is induction so you come across few terms inducible enzymes induction inducer inducible enzymes which helps to uh, synthesize new enzyme induction that is to start on with the process to form a new substrate and inducer which is also responsible to carry out the process together termed as the positive control further i added two image which helps us to understand the concept which again we have seen few images and animation in the previous video as well which is similar to this here we can see the hormone entering this cell so we can see hormone present the extracellular fluid as we know our body organs uh, the endocrine exocrine so the uh, these uh, endocrine gland they secrete the hormones so hormones which travel through the fluid mainly the blood enters into this uh, cell in the cell they form a hormone receptor complex when they combine with a receptor protein present already in the cell okay then this further enters into the nucleus through the nuclear pore where the dna as we have learned earlier video in the transcription translation process the dna forming mrna by transcription and mrna further moves from the nucleoplasm of the nucleus through the nuclear pore into the cytoplasm of the cell and in the cytoplasm by translation they form the polypeptide chain forming a new protein i had a similar image over here where you can see a large cell with the nucleus in it so as we saw in the first image hormone so here steroid hormone is Uh, in the circulatory system as i mentioned the blood it enters into the cell as we have seen here hormone receptor complex is formed so here the same uh, part that steroid hormone receptor protein is formed when it joins with the receptor which enters into the nucleus so first step the dna which forms pre mrna and then uh, which again carries out in the nucleus and further uh, it enters from the uh, nucleoplasm into the cytoplasm of this cell where the next step is formation of the new protein now come further to the operon concept okay now we are going step wise further so what we learned in the transcription translation we are coming across in the gene expression and further into the operon concept it is a transcriptional control mechanism of a gene regulation frankios jacob and jacks monod in 1961 explained that metabolic pathway are regulated as a unit so they are carrying the care process is carried out together as single unit which was put up or explained by jacob and monod for example in e coli when lactose sugar is provided to culture medium cell induces production of three enzymes necessarily for digestion of lactose so now in the earlier we saw the lactose which is hydrolyzed to form galactose and glucose right but here as we go into the deeper aspect here there are three enzymes which are necessary for the digestion part which are those three that is first beta galactosidase which helps to digest lactose into galactose and glucose second beta galactosidase permeates this permeates lactose molecule to enter into the cell third 
ट्रांस एसिटाइल इज दैट इज बीटा गैल्ट्रोसेड एसिटाइल ट्रांसफर इज दिस हेल्प टू ट्रांसफर एन एसिटाइल ग्रुप फ्रॉम एसिटाइल को एंजाइम टू गैलेक्टोसेड क्लियर सो दीज थ्री एंजाइम बीटा गैलेक्टोसेड इज बीटा गैलेक्टोसेड परमी इज एंड बीटा गैलेक्टोसेड एसिटाइल ट्रांसफर इज दैट इज ट्रांस एसिटाइल इज दीज थ्री एंजाइम्स आर रिक्वायर टू कैरी आउट द पर्टिकुलर फंक्शन clear now here again i added a image uh, which helps to understand what we are learning in the operon concept so first you see on the left side of the image very simple understanding where we again repeating the term the transcription translation so the earlier two part of the video is very important to understand this concept that is dna forming mrna mrna forming the protein okay here you can see the lac one uh, further you can see the lac operon where lac z lac y and lac a is present also the three enzyme which we just read out that is beta galactosidase permease and trans acetylase which help in the further process of digestion of lactose here also we have got allo lactose which is a inducer now what we learned in the previous slide inducer inducer enzyme so here we have got the inducer which is allo lactose and inactive repressor so here lactose is present repressor inactive and operon now going learn in detail part that is synthesis of these three enzymes is controlled by the cell long segment of dna known as operon now further the three enzymes which are necessary for digestion they are in turn synthesized uh, or uh, the it is controlled by the dna segment which is operon it consists of an operon site o and three structural genes z y and a now again in the previous slide we came across the three structural enzyme that is z y and a which we will again learn further as well the action of structural genes is regulated by operator site with the help of a repressor protein now again here the operator site is regulated with the help of repressor protein so this repressor protein is produced by the action of gene i what is that inhibitor known as regulator gene which helps in regulation the gene expression depends on whether operator is switched on or switched off so just uh, as we read the positive control which is because of the switched on uh, and the presence of inducer enzyme and inducer so here again when you go further here we learn about the regulator gene as we read and also the gene expression depends on whether the operator is on or off so if the operator is switched on the three genes that is z y and a are transcribed by rna polymerase into a single mrna that is what we saw in the transcription part each structural gene is generally known as cistron and the transcribed long mrna covering various cistrons is known as polycistronic so the structural gene the individual ones they are known as what cistron and they got a long mrna covering the different cistrons or various cistrons which are present since there are many of them the term coined is polycistrony further switching on or switching off of the operator is achieved by a protein called as the repressor that is what we learned in the beginning repressor protein so which helps to switch on or switch off the operator when this protein is attached to the operator and blocks it the switch is turned off and structural genes are not expressed so when this uh, protein is at attached to the operator in that case it is gets blocked and thereby it is turned off or switched off further again adding two more image with relation to the uh, operon model so here we can see the first animation image where we can see the 
different uh, symbols that is i as you know it is the inducer and the uh, ZYA the three structural genes and we can see the promoter operator here the mRNA uh, or you can say inducer further we can see the inducer uh, if it is uh, gets attached repressor inducer complex does not bind the DNA and uh, the ZYA which is the three structural genes and the three enzymes which helps in digestion of the lactose that Again, as we know, beta galactosidase, permease, and transacetylase. So, these three uh, enzymes are required and necessary for the digestion part. Now, we learned about the positive control. So, here negative control, that is DNA protein interaction causes switch off gene. So, if it is switch on, it is a positive control, it is switch off the negative control. Again, you can see the regulator gene, the promoter operator the structural gene when the repressor binds to the operator the transcription is prevented so this active repressor if it is connected to the operator site over here that is o which you can see over here as well in that case the transcription is prevented and when that is prevented that means it is switched off and that means it is negative control okay so that's why these two additional images helps us to understand the concept much more clearly now lack operon so moving from operon to lack operon lactose or lack operon of e coli is inducible operon the operon is switched on when a chemical inducer lactose is present in the medium if a chemical inducer is present and then it is switched on uh, here, the lac operon consists of following five components which are required. Now, which are those five? First, the regulator gene, which is the repressor gene. Then, promoter gene. Third, operator gene. Fourth, structural gene. And fifth, the inducer. So, it is now, but this inducer is not a component of the operon, whereas all the other four are the component. Again, if you see this image, here, which is an animation one, here you can see the repressor, which is the uh, regulator gene, right, which is the first essential component, followed by you can see promoter, operator, then the structural gene, which is. Uh, Z, Y and A. So, here you can see the all the three structural genes present and as we learned the four, fifth one inducer which is not a part of the component. So, by translation then maturation you can see the repressor protein, the RNA uh, oh, present over here which can bind to the promoter when the repressor is not produced. So, RNA transcribes operon on lac operon so production of lactose utilizing the gene so uh, so utilization of lactose leads to unbound repressor so you can see here the three um, structural genes z y and a so uh, again if you observe no inducer is bound to the repressor repressor bound to operator prevents rna polymerase so that's why here we can see the rna polymerase so free repressor uh, by a promoter when repressor is not bound to an operator. So, uh, RNA polymerase transcribes operon and lactose. Production of lactose utilizing enzymes, which uh, as we read, the beta galactosidase transfer, uh, transacetylase, etc., which is required to carry out the lactose digestion. Here, we go one by one. The first one, regulator gene. This gene controls the operator gene in cooperation with inducer present already in the cytoplasm. So, as we know, the mRNA produced in the nucleus is then uh, uh, moves into the cytoplasm through the nuclear pore. So, the, uh, the regulator gene proceeds the promoter gene. It may not be present immediately adjacent to the operator gene. Regulator gene pro produces a protein called repressor protein. The repressor protein binds with the operator and represses its action. It is called as regulator protein or the repressor gene. Further, promoter gene. 
This gene precedes the operator gene, means it, it is the next, the second important component before the operator. It is present adjacent to the operator, so it uh, although lies adjacent to it, but it is uh, present before the operator, where operator is later present after the promoter. The promoter gene marks the site at which the RNA polymerase enzyme binds. When the operator gene is turned on, the enzyme moves over the operator gene and transcription of structural gene starts. Promoter gene base sequence determines which strand of DNA acts as template. So the template or as we learned again in the previous video, the mould or the copy which is required, it depends on the promoter gene base sequence which determines which DNA acts as a copy or a mould or a template. Third, operator gene which precedes the structural genes. Like operator precedes the promoter, here the uh, structure gene precedes the operator or uh, after operator the structure gene is followed. This controls the functioning of structural genes. It lies adjacent to the structural genes. When operator gene is turned on by inducer, the structural genes produces mRNA. Operator gene is turned off by a product of repressor gene. So as we just learned the first component uh, which then continues with the second component, the promoter gene followed by the operator gene followed by the structural gene as you saw in sequence except the inducer which is not a part of the component. Then structural gene, fourth one, the uh, lactose or when lactose is added to the E. coli culture, the structural genes catalyzes mRNA which in turn produces polypeptides on the ribosomes. The polypeptides formed act as an enzyme to catalyze lactose in the cell. There are three structural genes in the sequence lac Z, lac Y and lac A as we just saw in the structural genes Z, Y and A. Now enzymes produced are, so these help in the production of the enzymes beta galactosidase, beta galactoside permease and transacetylase respectively. Now, the fifth inducer as I mentioned it is not a part of the structural gene. So here or gene expression it is a chemical in the cytoplasm which inactivates the repressor when lac is switched on then inducer joins with the repressor protein preventing the binding of repressor to the operator gene. So it prevents the binding of the repressor to the operator because if it binds then it will be switched off mode. So the operator gene is free and now enzyme RNA polymerase can move from promoter to the structural gene via the operator gene. So you can understand now the sequence very clearly from first to the second to the third to the fourth that is the structural genes right from the promoter operator to the structural genes. Now in case if the repressor protein binds with the operator then it will be in the switched off mode or negative control but if it does not binds then uh, the operator gene will be free and the enzyme RNA polymerase will move to the structural genes which helps in further production of the enzymes and then further helps in the digestion of the lactose. Now role of lact lactose, a few molecules of lactose enter into the cell by an enzyme permease. A small amount of this enzyme is present even when operon is switched off. A few molecules of lactose act as an inducer and bind to repressor. So uh, as first point says few molecules of lactose enters into the cell right by an enzyme permease. Then small amount of enzyme which uh, when uh, present in the along with the operon is switched off. Then the molecules of lactose which acts as an inducer and bind to repressor. Then next this repressor inducer complex fails to join with the operator gene which is then turned on otherwise it will be remain in the switched off mode. Further structural genes produce all the enzymes just as you saw Z, Y and A they produce all the three enzyme which are required 
for the digestion of the lactose thus lactose enzyme lactose acts as an inducer of its own breakdown when the inducer level falls the operator is blocked again by the repressor so the structural genes are repressed or inactivated again and this is the negative feedback which you as seen in the earlier image how the negative feedback that is because of the repressive protein if it binds to the operator gene then it will be negative feedback or switch off mode if it does not bind it will be positive feedback or it will be switch on mode clear now i hope this concept is very clear to everyone again i did a one more image for the working mechanism so if you see again the four important components which are those the regulatory gene the promoter the operator and the structural gene which is y z and a correct so that is lac operon so now you can see the all the four parts very clearly then here you can say regulatory gene by transcription forms what mrna the repressor mrna which further by translation forms the uh, polypeptide chain the repressor over here the that is by translation process again you can see here now this uh, repressor again uh, by the movement can get blocked with the operator if it gets blocked then it will be switched off mode that is negative feedback right if the repressor uh, uh, again because of inducer allolactose is inactivated repressor then what then the mrna will proceed uh, that is from operator to the structural gene the transcription is continued when the transcription is continued then the three enzymes are formed these three enzymes which helps in the further lactose digestion that is the formation of galactose and the glucose so so this switched on and switched off mode which again forms the positive and negative feedback so first you can see the a part where it is uh, the repressor which is uh, blocks the operator which will be switched off mode here if it uh, joins with the inducer it will be it become inactivated and the further transcription proceeds over here clear so that part completes with the uh, process of gene expression and uh, the all the other things which he learned about the operon lac operon now we come to the later part of the chapter that is genomics where we learned the genomics which is the present of medicine earlier it was future but now it is a present uh, uh, need of the medicine or it is uh, required in the present scenario as well now going to the introduction part of it the term genome was introduced by h winkler in 1920 again remember the scientist who introduced the genome h winkler in the year 1920 it is a total genetic constitution of an organism so what is genome total genetic constitution of an organism or in totality of the genes which we come across for the genomics which will be learning further alternatively it is a complete copy of genetic information that is dna or one complete set of chromosome monoploid or haploid of an organism the term genomics was coined by T H Roderick in 1986 so you can see the two terms genome and genomics genome was introduced by winkler in 1920 later after many years genomics was coined by roderick in 1986 so it is a study of genomics that is through analysis sequencing and mapping of genes along with the study of their functions so genomics is what analyzing then sequencing and mapping of the genes along with their functions further the sequencing of yeast drosophila and mouse genome was done in order to facilitate comparative studies between humans and other organisms commonly used for genetic studies in the laboratory so as we know the lab animals which are used for study so here most commonly preferred the yeast the drosophila and the mouse the genome which is studied and it is compared with human 
Several additional genomes are now either actively being sequenced or strongly considered for sequencing. These include several microbes, bee, tomato and other crops. So along with the spe uh, species what we learned earlier, here we also uh, include lot many other species of microbes, bee, tomato and other crops. Now genomic study may be classified into two types. One is structural, other is functional. Structural genomics, it involves mapping, sequencing, and analysis of the genome as we just learned. So the definition part of genomics states what study of genomics through analysis, sequencing, mapping along with the functions. So the first half analysis, sequence and mapping is the structural genomics one type. Or as it is classified. Second is what the functional genomics. So it deals purely with the study of functions of all gene sequence and their expression in the genomics. So if you divide the definition into two parts, it is one the structural and other the functional. Now coming to the application of genomics here. Uh, first you can see the two images which I added, one for the plant, other for the animal. In the plant you can see the bacteria which is uh, the DNA is extracted and isolated and then cloning is carried, designing of the genes, further it is transmitted into a, a suitable host and from it is uh, cultured by tissue culture, cell culture and then uh, it is then transformed into a fully grown species. Uh, by plant breeding method. Similarly, here some example of transgenic animals, mouse. If you see this example or image which is put up, the ear is grown on the back of the mouse. Then you can see mouse with the uh, glow. Then you can see fishes that glow. Then different cattle you can see, pig, sheep, fish. Uh, then chicken that is hen which is used for uh, food right so all these are the uh, examples of transgenic animals so now we go into the detailed aspect structural and functional genomics is used for different purpose in the improvement of crop plant human health and livestock so what is the main uh, application of genomics which can be used to improve crop plant for human health and to increase the livestock. Why the livestock? Maybe for uh, breeding, maybe for uh, food, for a um, lot other purposes, uh, experimentation, etc. The knowledge and understanding acquired for genomic research can be applied in a number of different sectors. That is why this understanding of genomics very, very important. These include medicine, biotechnology and social science. One of the three uh, important applied subjects. Further, it helps in the treatment of genetic disorders to gene therapy. So with the knowledge of genomics, it can be helped in treatment of genetic disorders, which we can see and it's not curable. But because of the knowledge of genomics, even that can be done by gene therapy. Further, genomics is used in agriculture to develop transgenic crops having more desirable traits. So it can be used to uh, carry out various uh, uses in the agricultural field like production of transgenic crops. Genetic markers developing genomics have application in forensic analysis. So again in forensic analysis, the genetic mar marker plays a very important role. Then genomics can lead to introduce new gene in microbes to produce enzyme, therapeutic proteins and even biofuels. So if the knowledge of genomics can help to introduce a new gene in the microbes which will help to produce enzymes which are required for various catalytic reactions. Also therapeutic proteins and biofuels. As you know in future we may run out of fuels or shortage of fuels which is already there. So these biofuels will be a future remedy.
now just added few more uh, applications of genomics that is molecular medicine microbial genomics risk assessment bioarchaeology anthropology evolution and human migration dna identification forensic agriculture livestock breeding and bioprocessing increased rate of genetic improvement detect abnormalities animal cloning and transgenic animals so these are some more additional application which i added to the field of genomics and two animation image which you see one is plant which is glowing at night so this can be of future where we can see the night during uh, during night we can see the plants glowing otherwise during night we don't see the plant because outside it will be dark but because of this particular gene the plants can glow and we can even observe the glowing plants during night similarly mouse where it glows during the night then coming to the human genome project with the help of the knowledge of genomic or uh, the under more understanding of genomics now just animation where the human scientists have reached uh, to the bottom of the sea to identify new dna new gene uh, which is expressed uh, which helps to or carry out various functions or as we learned the application right from medicines biotechnology livestock agriculture farming or gene therapy which is one of the important aspect or a boon for a genetic disorder now going into a detail aspect of human genome project human genome project was initiated in 1990 under the international administration of human genome organization in short hugo this project was coordinated by the us department of energy and national institute of health human genome project formally began in 1990 and was completed in 2003 so the beginning was in the 1990s and completed by 2003 now the main aims of the project are mapping the entire human genome at the level of nucleotide sequence so first mapping then to store the information collected from the project in the database then it is storing and collecting and storing the important information then to develop tools and techniques for analysis of the data so further is to uh, produce or develop different techniques and tools which is required for the analysis then transfer of the related technology to private sector such as industries why so that it can be uh, used for further research for the growth of the industries then taking care of legal ethical and social issues which may arise from the project now these projects can also have legal issues ethical problems and social issues as well so it also have to uh, take a, a point where these things can be uh, taken care then hgp that is human genome project was closely associated with the rapid development of a new area in biology called bioinformatics or we can say merging a field of biology with the field of information technology which forms a new field bioinformatics reason if i just give an example in biology we come across various plants various animals again in animals various invertebrates vertebrates or different phylum class etc right so there are lakhs of species present to learn keep a record is will be a difficult aspect but when you use the information technology the it sector into it all this vast information of plants animals microbes all this can be stored and it can be obtained it within our fingertips right further as researchers learn more about 
the functions of genes and proteins the knowledge will have a major impact in the field of medicine biotechnology and life science therefore hgp is very important so once the researchers learn more about the functions of genes and protein it can be very very useful for humankind in the field of medicine biotechnology and the life science or in all the human genome project further you uh, human genome project was to provide a complete and accurate sequence of 3 billion DNA base pairs that make up the human genome and to find out estimated number of human genes. Now about 33,000 genes has been estimated to be present in humans. So you can see a huge number 3 billion DNA base pairs 33,000 genes uh, which has been presently estimated in humans. The project was also aimed to sequence the genome of several other organisms such as bacteria that is E. coli, Cynorebritis elegans that is a free living non pathogenic nematode, Saccharomyces cerevisiae that is yeast, Drosophila the fruit fly, plants more commonly rice and Arabritosis mus musculus that is the mouse. So these are some other organism where the project aims to sequence the their genomes complete genome sequence of these model organism will be useful for comparative study that will allow researchers to study gene functions in these organism so along with humans all other uh, organisms which is a lab animal you can say or which helps uh, as a model organism for the comparative study so just a image added to show cause the uh, symbol for the uh, DNA genome sequence now all the uh, example which I lay, uh, learned just now I put all the images some of them you already know that is the E. coli the E. cell Drosophila which is the fruit fly mus musculus the mouse the Cyanorhabditis elegans Arabritopsis and rice plant further comparative genome size of human and other models so whatever is learned the chart which is given in the text that is figure 4.17 or table 4.17 where comparative genome size of human and other models are given so here few of the example which is given uh, that is human homo sapiens have 46 chromosome right but number is estimate is 33,000 just as you learned which is almost 3 billion base pair in case of mouse mus musculus 40 chromosome 25,000 gene number and 2.9 billion base pairs fruit fly that is drosophila melangester 8 chromosome 13,000 gene number and 165 million base pair plant that is Arabritopsis thaliana 10 chromosome number 25,000 gene number 157 million base pair round womb Cynorhabditis elegans 5 chromosome number 19,000 gene number and 97 million base pairs each Saccharomyces cerevisiae 32 chromosome number 6000 estimated gene number and 12 million base pair lastly bacteria that is e coli 1 in number for 4400 gene number and 4.6 million base pair so just i added a one more additional image along with the table given in the text species uh, that is t2 oh, phage E. coli, Drosophila, Melangista, Homo sapiens, uh, Paris, Japonica. So here genome size is 1,70,000 base pairs uh, and uh, the virus structure how it looks whereas E. coli 4.6 million base pair, the bacteria 130 million base pair in Drosophila, fruit fly 3.2 million in human and the canopy plant 150 billion base pair. Further, now coming to the DNA fingerprinting. Genes present on chromosomes are responsible for determining characters of the 
organism as well as inheritance of character due to recombination of paternal and maternal genes we differ from our parents that is now the child whether a boy or a girl may be looking like father or mother it is a old conception wrong conception that male the boy may look like father or the female the girl may look like mother but actually it is a mix up it can be either way around or sometimes uh, we may not look like either parent right it can be from our grandparents that is paternal or maternal that's why the recombination of paternal and maternal genes because of which we always differ from the parents maybe certain traits or genetic factors that as we learned earlier uh, we may be dominant so those traits can be seen otherwise we differ from our parents similar to the brothers and sisters unlike twins which is or uh, resembles almost same uh, even in the twins in certain cases they also differ in the character differences also arise due to infrequent mutations that occur during gamete formation due to all these factors every individual has its unique genetic makeup which may be called as fingerprint so the term is given fingerprint because each of the genetic makeup is also different the tangling developed to identify a person with the help of dna restriction analysis is known as dna profiling or dna fingerprinting this technique of fingerprinting was first given by british geneticist dr alec Jeffrey in 1984 so again it was the technique of fingerprinting first given by dr alec jeffrey and uh, this dna profiling or dna fingerprinting helps to identify a person dna fingerprinting technique is based on identification of nucleotide sequence present in this wonder molecule about 99.9 percent .9 of nuclear sequence in all persons same now we can see here 99.9 .9 percentage is same just 0.1 percent difference but still that one percent or 0.1 percent makes a huge difference only some short sequence of nucleotide difference from person to person in the population every person shows unusual sequence of 20 to 100 base pairs which are repeated several times these are termed as variable number of tandem repeats again students remember the term vntr short form what is vntr variable number of tandem repeats the length of region having vntr is different in each individual and hence is key factor in dna profiling so this dna profiling we can say mainly based on the vntr as it is different for each and every individual further the steps involved in dna fingerprinting are as follows First is isolation of DNA. The DNA must be recovered from the cells or tissues of the body that is host. Only small amount of tissue like blood, hair roots, skin is required. So the DNA fingerprint requires a small amount of tissue either from the blood, the hair root or the skin. Second, restriction digestion. The isolated DNA is treated with restriction enzyme. The restriction enzyme cut the DNA into small fragments having variable length. This phenomenon is called restriction fragment length polymorphism that is RFLP. Students, second term, earlier page we learned VNTR, variable number tandem repeat. Here, Second short form and important one restriction fragment length polymorphism RFLP. Third gel electrophoresis. The DNA samples are loaded for agarose gel electrophoresis under electric influence. The DNA fragments which are negatively charged move towards the positive pole. The movement of these fragments depend on length of the fragment. This results in the formation of bands that is DSNA double stranded splits to single stranded by alkali treatment. So here by gel electrophoresis, the electro uh, agarose gel is loaded, in, loaded and the electrophoresis by the electrical influence starts to separate the uh, 
separate the DNA fragments. So negatively charged move towards the positive pole. Further, sudden blotting, the separated DNA fragments are then transferred to nylon membrane or nitrocellulose filter paper by placing it over the gel and soaking them with filter paper overnight. That is sudden blotting. By what is required in that? The nylon membrane or a nitrocellulose filter paper. Now, the fifth step is selection of DNA probe. A known sequence of single standard DNA is prepared. It is called DNA probe. Now, this DNA probe is obtained from the organism or prepared by cDNA preparation. That is complementary DNA preparation. The DNA probe is labeled with radioactive isotope. So, here the cDNA uh, which is uh, uh, required or from the organism the DNA probe is uh, obtained which helps for the selection of the DNA probe. So, DNA probe is now labeled with radioactive isotope. Then hybridization. Probe DNA is added to the nitrocellulose filter paper containing host DNA, the single standard DNA probe pairs with complementary base sequence of the host DNA, host strand. That's why this DNA probe is important. As a result, DNA-DNA hybrids are formed on the nitrocellulose filter paper that is during this sudden blotting. Remaining single standard DNA probe fragments are washed off or removed. Then, Photography. The nitrocellulose filter paper is photographed on an X-ray film by autoradiography. This film is analyzed to determine the presence of hybrid DNA. Clear the seven steps. Fifth, the selection of the DNA probe, then hybridization, then photography. Here we can see just I put an image of a DNA, uh, the fingerprint, normal fingerprint to understand all the fingerprints of every individual is different. So which helps. So if you have that uh, fingerprint, then it helps for uh, checking, submitting, searching, database, etc. Then here I showed an animation image to show this DNA fingerprinting process right, right from starting from isolation and then followed by the other stages. So you can see the standard sample, samples for testing, the meter which is attached over here. Now here we can see the DNA strands getting separated on the uh, we can say nitrocellulose filter paper. So this uh, the method how the electrophoresis is carried we can see the uh, uh, in the agarose gel as we load the sample we can see the sample testing it uh, gets separated the dna strands getting separated which then can be transferred into the nitrocellulose filter paper now here i added one more animation image for your understanding so, you as I mentioned, either blood sample or root, uh, the hair sample or a sample which is taken from the human. So, here preferably the blood sample which is taken, DNA from the WBCs, then mixed with restriction endonucleus to obtain DNA fragment. Further, DNA fragment loaded into an agarose gel and separate by electrophorus which you saw in the previous animation also. Then, the DNA brands transferred into a nylon membrane that is nitrocellulose filter paper which is then incubated with radioactive probe that is complementary DNA, cDNA with a radioactive nucleus. Then further, X-ray photograph sheet placed over the membrane and later developed to reveal the series of DNA bands. Okay, now here application. So, you can see why uh, and how this DNA fingerprinting is used. So, here we can see in forensic science that DNA fingerprinting is used to solve the problems of rape and some complicated murder cases. So, that can be done uh, by the knowledge or application of DNA fingerprinting. DNA fingerprinting is used to find the biological father or mother or both of the child in case of dispute. So, if there is a dispute, in that case, we can 
uh, use this DNA fingerprinting. That's why I added an image over here which shows the child, the son, the daughter, the father and the blood sample. So if you take the blood sample, then you can easily see the difference uh, or identify the parent. So the biological father, biological mother, both can be identified by using the DNA fingerprint, print fingerprinting. Third, the DNA fingerprinting is used in pedigree analysis in cats, dogs, horses and humans. So also we can uh, use for evolutionary relationship or the pre-degree analysis of uh, the all uh, earlier ancestry can also be done with the DNA analysis. Also on to the right, I added one more uh, fingerprint image where you can see with the help of the database uh, already present you can uh, find uh, the culprit in case of crime scene uh, how the, DA or the uh, no, uh, fingerprint is taken and matched with the fingerprint already present in the uh, database so uh, by exact uh, the, uh, the fingerprint we can identify which person uh, or uh, the fingerprint is present in the crime scene okay Further, uh, just little bit information about Dr. Lalji Singh, uh, the scientist who is father of DNA fingerprinting in India. He was instrumental in making DNA fingerprinting mainstream in India for research and its forensic application. So always we should know the scientist uh, and specifically now he is an Indian scientist who uh, was instrumental in making DNA fingerprinting or as called the father of DNA fingerprinting in India. He obtained DNA probe from Y chromosome of female banded great snake. In snake, female has XY and male YY. It is the reverse. Reverse in the sense in male, a human male it is XY and female it is XX. But here in female it is XY whereas in male it is YY chromosome. The unique segment obtained from this chromosome is in branded crate minor that is BKM DNA. It is used to develop pro for indigenous DNA fingerprinting technique. Now contributions of Dr. Lalji Singh. He installed several dedicated laboratories on aspect of genetics such as population biology, structural biology and transgenic research. His work on field of DNA fingerprinting technology contributed for wildlife conservation, forensic evolution and phylogeny. Established Center for DNA Fingerprinting and Diagnostic CDFD in late 1990s, making it nodal center for DNA fingerprinting and diagnostic for all species and several disease. Founded Laboratory for Conservation of Endangered Species in short, lacons. Clear? So these are some of the contributions of Dr. Lalji Singh. Lastly, the end of the chapter and the questions based on what you have learned today. So I hope the concept of uh, protein synthesis, gene expression, genomics, human genome project is very clear to all of you. So thank you all of you.